When I was four years old, Dad started taking me out for walks every day, and I loved them at first because we play a really fun game. Keep an eye out for change on the ground. Whoever collects the most coins wins. But one day, we came across a nickel that was stuck to the pavement, and Dad just wouldn't let it go. We spent an hour trying to scrape it off and screaming, Come off, you stupid jerk! Help me, Elena! I soon realized that Dad wasn't crazy. He was just cheap, and we weren't poor. Mom and Dad owned a large shoe business, but that didn't stop him from pinching pennies. On my sixth birthday, no one came because the birthday invites Dad had emailed to my classmates said, Bring cash presents only and your own food. One time when I was seven, he took me to a McDonald's and handed me a coupon. Go place your order while I grab the mustard and ketchup sachets, and then you stuff as many as you can in your pockets. But instead, I went to the counter and told the guy that some lunatic was stealing their stuff. Dad was thrown out immediately, and I skipped out a minute later with my Happy Meal. His cheapskate ways made me really angry, but one day, I totally lost it. Dad was really weird about tissue paper. He kept all the paper rolls in his cupboard, and Mom and I had to ask his permission to take them. I was in the third grade when I had a friend over, and she accidentally knocked over some juice. I quickly ran to Dad's room, snuck out a roll, and started cleaning up. But just then, Dad walked in, and he screamed at me till he turned blue. My friend started to cry and said, Sir, I'll pay for the roll. Take this dollar. Please forgive me. (laughs) And Dad actually took it. Oh my god, Dad, why are you so cheap? But just then, Mom walked in, looking really excited. I've got some great news. We're going to have a baby. Dad looked like he was having a stroke. This is too much. She used a whole, a whole paper roll. And you got yourself pregnant? And I, and I can't deal with this. He took his car keys and left, while I ran to Mom and hugged her. Sadly, he came back, and he kept talking nonstop about how expensive another kid would be. When little Macy arrived, we were psyched. But then we found out something sad. Macy was born with partial blindness. To be honest, I didn't think it was really a big deal. I took Macy in my arms and started loving her right away. Once at the dinner table, three-year-old Macy grabbed a fork and started waving it about. It hit Dad's nose and he started bleeding. Dad had to wrap a band-aid across his nose for a few days. He looked hilarious. Since Mom and Dad were really busy with their business, they often made me miss after-school activities and parties to take care of Macy, and I usually didn't mind at all. But when I was in 8th grade, my best friend had planned an amazing birthday bash, and I was really excited to go. When I told my parents, though, they said I couldn't, because they had something really important. It wasn't fair I'd be missing my best friend's birthday. I love my sister, but I really wanted to go this time, so I came up with a plan. As soon as Macy fell asleep, I wore my favorite outfit and ran out the door. I'd be back before my parents were. I completely lost track of time, and when I saw my watch, I knew I was in so much trouble. But something much worse than getting caught was waiting for me. An ambulance was parked outside our house. I rushed towards it to find Macy on a stretcher, her head bleeding. She'd woken up and had fallen off the stairs looking for me. The doctor told us that Macy's head would be okay, but she had lost her eyesight completely. What? I couldn't believe it. To make things worse, Dad turned to me and started shouting. So, Elena, was it worth going to this party that has cost your sister her eyesight? And do you have any idea what this is going to cost me in medical bills? You're so selfish! I felt like my heart was about to explode. But just then, Mom hugged me tight and glared at Dad. We're the parents, not Elena. We're responsible for both our kids. Don't blame her. But Dad just wouldn't stop making me feel guilty. One day when I was about to go meet my friends, he suddenly stopped me. After everything you've done, how can you even think about fun? Think about poor Macy, who can't have any fun. And it's all your fault. Dad... That's not really fair. Don't you talk about what's fair. Do you think it's fair that I have to pay for two daughters? One selfish and one blind? I turned away and ran up to my room, slamming the door behind me and crying tears of anger and guilt. Mom always made me feel better, though, and she told me to just ignore Dad and do my own things. But it got harder to take care of Macy as she grew older. She was the naughtiest little kid. My parents hired a nanny for her, but one day when Macy accidentally sent some food flying on Dad's shirt, He threw his napkin down. That's it! I don't think that nanny's teaching Macy any manners. I think we should send her to some institution. Mom and I were horrified, and I covered Macy's ears. Send her away? How can you even say that? Well, I'm not paying for that nanny anymore. No, I'll take care of her. 
She's not going anywhere. So after that, I canceled all my after-school activities to stay home with Macy more. Well, except one. I joined the Young Doctors Club, where we were introduced to medical professionals and taught about health sciences. I found it super interesting and fun. But I got home a bit late one day, and Dad was furious. You wanted to be Mother Teresa and take care of the burden? You do it now! Forget about your stupid club and find something to do at home. Take up writing. An idiot can write stories. I did take up writing, and I wrote funny little stories that made Macy laugh. But I'd also research different biology topics and write about them. I'd even discuss them with Macy, who, as it turns out, was quite the little genius. She actually gave me some ideas that helped me with my research. One day, when I took Macy to a park, she said she wanted some ice cream. As I paid the guy and turned around, I saw that she was gone. I looked around in panic, when suddenly I heard her giggling. I ran towards the sound and found her talking to a boy around my age. Hey, you! Get away from her! Is that how you thank someone who just saved your little sister? The boy explained that Macy was running towards the busy road and he'd stopped her. I immediately apologized and thanked him, and he just smiled and left. A few days later, my biology teacher came across me in the school library and saw the notes I was writing. She looked completely stunned. This is brilliant, Elena! You wrote this yourself? She said my research was on a topic scientists had been struggling with for ages, and I was really onto something. Research a bit more on the areas I've highlighted, and let's meet in a week. When she left, I was floating through the bookshelves with joy, and I crashed into someone. Ouch! It was the guy from the park. Apparently, he was my senior at school, and his name was Kevin. I'm so sorry, I didn't see you. I'm just so excited about something. I couldn't hold it in, so I told him all about my research. Turns out, the bio teacher was his aunt. He said he loved biology too, and could probably help me. For the next few days, we met in the library and discussed ways to improve my work. It would sometimes get hard to focus because Kevin was just so darn cute. One day when I got home after our session, all my happiness vanished suddenly. Dad was waiting for me at the front door, holding my research papers in his hand. He threw them in the air and screamed loudly enough for the entire neighborhood to hear. So this is what you've been doing all this time? This stupid research? What a waste of paper! And you think you'll go off and be a scientist one day? You can't, because you have a sister to take care of, who was blind because of you, remember? Why did Dad have to be such a jerk? I turned around and ran away, and the only place I could think of was Kevin's home. His aunt was there too and was rather surprised to see me. He quickly took me up to his room and told me something shocking. I think my aunt is trying to steal your research and publish it under her name. Turns out, some papers had fallen out from her bag, and when Kevin saw them, he realized she'd copied all my notes and written her name on them. How can she do this? As angry tears poured down my face, Kevin suddenly pulled me close. Don't be upset, Elena. We won't let her get away with it. And then he kissed me. I forgot all about my troubles for a moment and kissed him back. The next day, we went to the principal and exposed the biology teacher. She got fired on the spot, and the principal made sure I got my research back. After that, I didn't care anymore about what Dad said. With Kevin's help, I worked hard on my research proposal and submitted it along with my university application. And to my shock, I actually got accepted on full scholarship. Guys, would you listen to this? Harvard Medical School thinks I'll be a really valuable addition to their university. Mom and Macy gave me a big hug as they cried tears of joy. But Dad, well, he looked livid. Congratulations, Elena! You can finally pursue your dreams and only think about yourself. Go live your selfish life. That's when all the years of anger came bubbling out and I snapped. I'm selfish? I want to be a doctor so I can help people like Macy. But you are the world's worst dad and a cheap little man. I will chase my dreams and without taking another penny from you. And that doesn't make me selfish. I love Macy and nothing will ever change that. A month later, I packed my bags, kissed Macy goodbye, and left. After years of hard work, I finally became a practicing neurosurgeon. Kevin helped me through everything and was the best boyfriend ever. Mom and I kept in touch, and I was so happy to see Macy growing so big. But one day, Mom told me that Dad had made some stupid investments and lost the business. I started sending her money and decided that as soon as I was financially stable, I'd move Mom and Macy in with me. A few weeks later, I was shocked to see both my parents at the hospital looking really upset. Oh, Elena, Macy has a blood clot in her brain and needs surgery immediately. We didn't know where else to go. How will we even afford it? My baby sister was in danger? Mom, don't even think about it. I'll take care of all the expenses and I will do her surgery myself. During the surgery, 
I also discovered a tiny tumor pressing on her optic nerve, and I removed it along with the clot. And now we could only wait for her to wake up. When Macy finally opened her eyes and I called her name, she looked at me directly and said, Elena, I, I can see you. I can see you all. It turned out that the tumor I'd removed had restored most of her vision. It was truly a miracle. I hugged her tightly and so did mom and dad. This was the first time we'd ever had a family group hug. And I thought maybe he changed. But then he turned to me and said, Oh, my darling Elena, I always knew you were a selfless angel. You will take care of us all. How soon can we move in with you? I looked him straight in the eye. I'll take care of you, Dad, and I'll be much more generous than you ever were. But you will not be living with us. Well, long story short, Dad moved in with his sister, and I sent him an allowance every month. Fast forward a few years, and I've published several groundbreaking research papers and became a well-renowned neurosurgeon. I've always had a complex about them. I only wore baggy clothes, and I changed when no one could see me. The whole school was preparing for the winter ball, and I was no exception. Together with my mother and my younger sister, we went to the store to pick up an elegant dress for me. I was walking between the rows for a long time when I suddenly saw that very dress. It's like it chose me by itself. Grabbing it, I ran to the fitting room, and when I put it on, I realized it was perfect. But it hugged my hips really tightly. And at that moment, it seemed to me that there was nothing terrible about it because the dress was so lovely. When my sister came up, I got even more excited because she said, How beautiful! And then my mother came, and she spoiled my mood. She said, It fits terribly, don't you see? We all have huge hips in our family. They should be hidden. Oh, yeah, I guess I almost forgot to tell you. Wide hips are my family's thing. My mother also wore baggy clothes, and even my little sister, even if she was only 13, was already beginning to be embarrassed by her round shape. I tried arguing with my mother, but no dice. She just criticized me and called the dress ugly, and then left to pick up something for me on her own. I didn't want to take off the dress, so I didn't exactly hurry to the fitting room. I was trying to enjoy the last seconds near the mirror, when suddenly... Oh, is that Trevor? In the reflection of the mirror, I saw my classmate looking at me intensely. I didn't know why he was looking at me, so I got scared and I hid in the fitting room. I didn't see Trevor at all again that day. My mother had picked a dress for me that I didn't like at all, but it had a big plus. My hips couldn't be seen in it. However, even this dress couldn't spoil the anticipation before the ball. I was waiting for the dance, and I still hoped that one of the guys would be inviting me. But I still couldn't get Trevor out of my head. Was he staring at me because he liked me or something? It soon turned out that I was waiting for the dance in vain. I remember standing in a circle of friends, and all of them were so beautiful. The guys all came up and invited one or the other, and it was as if they didn't even notice I was there. As if I was nothing but an empty space. And then Trevor came over. At the sight of him, my heart jumped joyfully in my chest. But as soon as he looked at me, his face twisted in disgust. He turned around and he left. And so, no one had asked me to dance. Of course, I was very upset. I came home and I burst into tears. Graduation was in six months, and now I wasn't even sure I wanted to show up. No one was going to invite me, and I didn't want to go alone, like a loser. I couldn't even grieve properly because there was an important event around the corner. A basketball game with a neighboring school, in which my best friend Kate participated. Even if I wasn't part of the team, I still prepared as if I was. I invented chants, drew posters. I really wanted to cheer Kate up because I went to every one of her training sessions and I was friends with the whole team. And on game day, they arrived at school and the girls changed into their clothes and went to warm up. But for some reason, Kate was late. Five minutes passed, then ten, and there was less and less time left before the match. Everyone was already beginning to seriously worry when there was a call. Kate had been coming down the stairs and had twisted her leg. She wouldn't be able to play. The entire team was literally crushed because there was no reserve player in the team. And without Kate, the team wasn't going to be allowed on the court. There was an excited hum in the stands and everyone was really worried. And then one of the girls on the team came up with an idea. Let Teresa play instead of Kate. You've been to every training session. You know what to do. It's better than disqualification. Oh no, not that. I was scared just thinking about tight shorts. Naturally, I started denying it, but the girls resisted. So in the end, I couldn't refuse. I pulled on my uniform with shaking hands. I'd never been so nervous in my life. And finally, when I turned around, I realized that everyone in the locker room was looking at me with their mouths open in surprise. 
I didn't have time to understand what they were thinking. We just had to hurry to the court. The game started, and, you know, to everyone's surprise, I played just fine. I always had liked basketball, so I practiced in the evenings in the backyard. I may have even tried to get into the team if I hadn't been embarrassed about the open uniform. However, at that moment, I forgot about everything in the world, even about how I looked. I'd been dreaming of playing real basketball for so long, and now my dream was finally coming true. The game turned out to be a very tense one. There was a draw in the last minutes. I remember how I was driving the ball and suddenly realized that victory depended on me. And at the same moment, all of my complexes attacked me. I suddenly remembered that I was running in shorts, and the whole school was looking at me, and, and they knew my secret. I looked around, and I realized that everyone's eyes were focused on me. I ran, and I threw the ball, and missed. This meant we lost. I was the first one to return to the locker room. I thought the girls would scold me, but they flew into the locker room after me and rushed to hug me. It turns out that our opponents had been a very strong team. In secret, the girls had been very ready to lose, and I'd never thought that victory could have been so close. And, well, the most important thing was, they liked my figure. I was shyly covering myself with a towel while the girls enthusiastically discussed me among themselves. I heard one of them even compare me to Kylie Jenner. The next day, when I was sitting in class, the principal came into the classroom and invited me to come with him. I followed him down the corridor and my heart sank into my heels with fear. This had to have been about yesterday's loss right? Well, when we entered the office, I saw a man I didn't know, and to my surprise, he turned out to be a director of a modeling agency. Mr. Martyr was the father of one of the kids at school. He said he'd noticed me at the game yesterday, and he needed girls with just my figure at the agency. I was in shock. When I came home, I thought for a long time and decided I wasn't going to tell my mother. She would never approve of what I was going to do, but I did decide to share it with my sister. She was completely delighted because she herself had long dreamed of becoming a model and had always been upset that nothing was going to work out for her because of how she looked. And, well, this was how my modeling career began. I went to the agency, signed a contract, and they made me up a portfolio. It was strange not to be ashamed of my own body, but everyone around me admired it and showered me with compliments, so my self-confidence grew. However, not all people understood my peculiarity. There were also some toxic people. Once, I came to the casting of a cool fashion brand and realized that I was the only curvy girl. All of the other skinny models looked at me as if I'd opened the wrong door. And just before the casting, I heard from one of the other girls. I actually know this casting director. He needs slim, not fat. She obviously hadn't said any names, but the way she was looking at me made me understand everything. I didn't belong in a place like this. I was so upset that I wanted to go home. But I remembered my little sister was waiting for me at home. She believed in me. Overcoming my anxieties, I stayed and I passed the casting with my head held high and I was cast. I was the only one out of hundreds of the most beautiful girls. Oh, how nice it was for me. The photo shoot turned out to be just awesome. The photos got into a fashion magazine and banners of me were hung all over the city. But most importantly, a big banner hung right in front of the school. Absolutely everyone saw it. Mom was upset because I hadn't told her anything. And she was also terribly surprised that someone could like how our family looked. And at school, my popularity grew rapidly. Everyone wanted to be friends with me, and they asked to snap pictures. I continued to go to castings, shoot with cool photographers, and I felt more and more confident each day. So, at some point, I realized I'm not gonna hide myself under baggy clothing anymore. I'm gonna wear exactly what I wanna wear. And then, there was a call from an agency that changed everything. They offered for me to participate in a local beauty contest. Of course, I just couldn't help but agree. I was preparing and waiting, but the contest was not what I expected. Again, I was completely alone among hundreds of beautiful, thin girls. And again, they looked at me with disdain, even disgust. Under the eyes of all of the other models, my confidence was melting, and it didn't matter what else I'd achieved. I walked behind the curtain. I didn't know if it was really worth participating in this at all. Maybe it was just better to go home. Why had I come here in the first place? I remember going back to put my clothes on and reaching for my high-heeled shoes before going on stage, and I saw broken glass inside. Jeez! It seemed like these girls were not gonna stop at anything just so they could win. 
After this, I just, I, I couldn't continue. Tears blurred my eyes as I packed my bags and I walked to the exit. I had almost left, but at the literal last moment, a miracle happened. At the entrance to the building, I ran into my mother and sister, who had came to support me. And you won't believe what they were both wearing. Tight jeans. My sister had always been okay with it, but my mom, she had always been uncomfortable all her life with her body and had worn baggy clothes to hide her hips. I can't even imagine what it had cost her to overcome herself. Looking at my proud mother and at my little sister, who was looking at me with adoration, I realized that I couldn't let them down. Despite my fear and my doubts, I returned back to the contest, and I went on stage, and I took the crown. And I realized that thanks to me, everyone in my family became a little more confident. Even my mother, who was the one who instilled her complexes onto us. And also, that nothing was impossible. Prom was also coming up. With the money that I'd earned, I was able to buy the dress that I'd loved so much six months ago. And I looked amazing in it. It was kind of funny to remember how worried I was that no one would invite me to the ball. Because invitations were now pouring in from all sides. <laughs> Even Trevor showed up. Only, I never gave my consent to any of them. They didn't like me in my baggy clothes. So, they didn't deserve me when I started looking awesome. And prom was the best evening of my life. My friends and I had a great time. At the very end, I was even chosen as the queen of the school. And it became clear that all of the doors that had once been closed in front of me were now open. I helped my sister to get a job in modeling too, just like she'd dreamed of. And I started my own blog to help girls like me gain self-confidence. Now, well, I think I'm ready to share the lesson that I learned. You never have to be afraid of anything. Take advantage of any opportunity that life throws you. And also, never listen to anyone else about how you look. And don't hesitate, because every person is beautiful in their own way. Hey, I'm Anita. I'm 15, and I have a disease called CIP, which stands for Congenital Insensitivity to Pain. This means that I don't feel pain like you do. In fact, I've never been in pain, and I have no idea what it feels like. This is an extremely rare hereditary disease. My great-grandpa had it, and it skipped a few generations before it was passed down to me. I know you're probably thinking that feeling no pain sounds great, but I can assure you that it isn't as good as it sounds. We are meant to feel pain for a reason. It's there to warn us when something is wrong, whether it be a toothache, a fever, or when a substance is too hot. I've never been able to run a bath by myself. My mom has to run it for me and check the temperature. It also means that when I'm in the bath, I can't refill it with hot water in case I burn myself. I can feel hot and cold, but I have no idea what a burn feels like or what being so cold your toes hurt feels like. I also have to cut up my food and let it cool down for five minutes before I eat it so I don't burn my mouth. I don't even bother with hot drinks. I just stick to drinking juice. I watch my friends with curiosity when they accidentally hurt themselves. I just find their in-pain expressions so odd. My mom shut her finger in the trunk of the car and screamed before she walked off shaking her hand for at least 10 minutes. If I shut my finger in the trunk, I wouldn't even flinch, which is bad because it means I could cause myself more of an injury. My great-grandpa, the one who also had CIP, died at the age of 40 from heart disease. He didn't have any symptoms because of his CIP, so he had no warning signs that he was seriously ill. My parents are terrified that I will end up ill too and not realize it. They make me go to the doctors for a monthly checkup. There is no definite cure for CIP, although there are some experimental treatments out there. My parents have refused these, as they don't want me to end up feeling like a lab rat. They say it's up to me to decide if I want to try any when I reach 18. I have scars on my arm from when I was in a restaurant and spilt a boiling mug of tea on it, but because I didn't feel pain, I didn't flinch or put it under cold water. I once fell off a climbing frame and twisted my ankle, but continued to walk on it for the rest of the day. That evening, my mom saw my ankle was swollen and took me to the hospital. Turns out I'd badly sprained it and caused myself more injury by walking around on it all day. I was on crutches for weeks. I'm not allowed to take part in any sports for fear of hurting myself, and I don't use the cooker or the kettle. My mom has to tell me if I need to put sun lotion on or to wear a jacket. 
If it's really sunny, my mom doesn't let me go out at midday, as she's worried I'll end up badly sunburned. Even though I wasn't meant to play sports, once, at lunchtime, I joined in with my friends and played basketball. A boy tried to take the ball off me, and I was shoved hard onto the ground. He was staring at me, open-mouthed, and some of the other kids were gasping at me. I looked down at my arm. It had popped out of its socket and was hanging there limp. I hadn't even realized. The boy walked with me to the nurse's room, and I sat down on the metal frame bed, all smiles. At least, that was until my body went into meltdown and I fainted. I woke up three hours later in hospital with my arm in a bandage. Needless to say, my parents were furious with me. When I was younger, some kids used to poke and hit me to see if I would flinch. I used to be covered in marks and bruises, and my parents were horrified. They complained to my teacher, who gave the entire school a lecture about the dangers of my condition and how their actions could have put me in hospital. Now that I'm older, I find that most kids try and steer well away from me in fear of accidentally harming me, especially since the arm-popping incident. It makes me feel sad, but there's nothing I can do about it. My friend Kayla says I'm like a real-life superhero. I don't think I have a very good power at all. I'd much rather be able to have super speed or turn invisible. I do worry about my future. I hope I don't end up ill and not realize it like my great-grandpa. My condition makes my life difficult at times, but I'm not going to let it get in my way. I may not be a superhero, but I am me, and I will try my best to protect myself from injuries and have a normal life. Thanks for listening to my story! Like this post if you believe that we have to make the most of our lives regardless of the obstacles we have to face. Please leave a comment with your thoughts on my story. I'd love to hear them.